Hey guys, what's up? It's Dylan Skelly Dunn. It's been a very... Where's Harry? I feel good now. I feel better. It feels more even. Like it's the two of us taking on the world. So hello, it's been a while. Uh, you might be wondering, why the really gross looking hair, Dylan? Well, my faceless friend. My... <laughs> My friend and I from work are in a competition to see who can grow out their hair fast enough, faster, fast, fastlier to make a, get a bun, like pull it into a bun. So I can't get it cut. So I have to like push it back. I'm like rocking that like Justin Bieber look, but better. And I'm not an a-hole. So, uh, yeah. So today I'm going to tell you the story of a girl and um, how she drowned the whole world. And she looks so sad in photographs, but I absolutely love her. And I love refreshments. You need a refreshment. You need to drink. You need to hydrate. Mm. I just I forgot I brushed my teeth again. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, good. Nothing like that to wake you up at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So this is the story of the time that I got asked to dog sit. Now, if you don't know anything about me, I love dogs. Oh, I love dogs. Oh, yeah, I love them so much. They make me so happy. So I love dogs. Cats, they're okay now. I mean, I know I, previously I told you how I hate cats because if you don't know, the incident, TM. But I have a cat now. And she's not so bad. Other cats, I don't know. My cat, not so bad. So I have dog sat before. It went okay. Um, I'm not the worst dog sitter. Let me just preface that because we asked my grandmother to dog sit my dog while we were on vacation, my, my ginger. And she lost my dog for two whole days. She lost my dog. She, like, called everyone in my family, and they're, like, out having, like, this search party for my, like, 10-year-old dog when, in fact, she was in the closet um, just chilling for two whole days. So, I don't lose dogs in closets. I make dogs come. No, I'm not going to finish that. That's, that's weird. I'm not going to say that. If you knew where I was going with that, don't say anything, because it kind of sounds weird. I'm not that. I'm okay. Moving on. So, my friends, um, Archibald and Gumby, <laughs> Archibald and Gumby, I still got it, uh, they were going on vacation and they wanted me to watch their two dogs. Math. Two dogs. So, I'm like, yeah, I love dogs. I'll watch them. It's an empty house. I, they had Netflix when I didn't have Netflix, so I was like, Yes. So Archibald and Gumby had two dogs. One was like one of those massive, big, like Scooby-Doo horse dogs. Like you could ride this dog off into battle, off into war. And then the other one was like a tiny little chihuahua thing. And like, it was so small, you could just like cradle it. You can't cradle the other one. You could like get crushed to death. But so, I, I was going to make up names for these dogs, but these dogs can't find me on the internet and know that I'm talking about them. Ha ha ha. So, Killer and Big Mike. Yeah, two of the names. Killer and Big Mike. I'm watching them. And, like, all you have to do when you dog watch is feed them, take them out, take them for a walk, and, you know, just give them a little puppy love. Like, just, like, pet them. Just pet them. I don't know who pets dogs like this. Play the piano on the dog. So, I'm like, I can do this. And if me going like this is bothering anyone else as much as it's bothering me, I need to, like, tape my hands together. Just, like, <sighs> sit on them. I'm going to sit on my hands. Okay, so, what? I'm, like, moving my hands to, to, to tell you the story, but I'm not going to move them. So, <sighs> I didn't remember what dog was what because they didn't have, like, like, I know you have to have dog tags, but... I can't do it. it that, that lasted all of two seconds. So they had collars, but like they only had to wear them when they went outside. And they didn't have to wear them if you took them out in the back because there was like a fence. So I never put the collars on the dog. Dogs. 
big mistake because the only thing that they told me other than you know like the simple walk feed pet you know love uh was that um killer could not be brought out without a leash could not so like it was fine because I was taking them out in the back normally, you know, to the, the fenced in area. So you couldn't, like, maybe the bigger dog could have, like, done this really cool, like, move and jumped over the fence because it was so big. But, like, I would have paid money to see that. So, like, I would have been so mad if it, like, ran away. Two days into this dog job, um, I let them out. But then I, <sighs> I didn't check the gate. I didn't check the gate in the back. I did not check the gate of the fence in the back. I didn't do it. I just didn't do it. I have flaws, okay? I just forget things. I'm a flawed human being. Whatever. I didn't check. So, I don't know these dogs' names. I mean, they're cute and lovable and fluffy. I don't need to name them. I'm d you just, whenever you're talking to a dog that you really don't know, you just do the, oh, do -do -do -do, like your baby, you're so cute, that kind of voice. So like the dog doesn't care if you know its name or not. You're just, you're already communicating its language because I let the dogs out. Who? Me. It was I. Who let the dogs out? I let the dogs out. <gasps> so the one thing they told me was that that dog had to wear a collar. I had to wear a leash in the collar because it would run away. And I, here, I'm thinking, if you're going to name your dog that, it's probably the big one. It's probably the big one that'll run away because, you know, they like, they're like, oh, they are. They basically look like horses and horses like to run and it would be really majestic. So I'm thinking this majestic animal will run away. No, it's the little, little piece of poop with legs that ran away, ran right out the gate. So, it like takes two seconds to process that I only have one dog. So I like see the gate, mentally do the math of like two dogs minus one dog equals one. And then I'm like, <sighs> and I can feel Harry judging me because the next thing I did is that I sprinted out of that gate and I ran into the street and I'm like screaming this dog's name. I'm like, kill her! Kill her! So, you know, that was a really, really not a great thing to scream because if you're yelling the word killer, what is, what are people bound to think that I have a tiny chihuahua that I'm chasing down the street named Killer or that, you know, someone may or may not be coming to unalive me? And this dog has like little legs, little, it's like poop on with legs, poop on wheels. And it's like running, but it's so fast. It has like, those legs must be going like 80 miles an hour just to like get it to go. Cause it's, and I was not like the most, I'm not like the most in shape person. I mean, I enjoy running, but like not for my life. How the street works is that it's like this and the dog was running down it. So, you know, that already gave the dog momentum. That's probably why it was so fast. But at the end of the street, it comes to like a really busy main road. So I knew that if the dog got to this main road that I would have to, you know, have a little doggy funeral. I would have to watch all dogs go to heaven in real time is so close to this main road with these cars going and I like run and I dive for this dog. I'm like, kill her! And I grab him. And you would think that me diving for this dog, I would like miss or something or like I would be the one going head into traffic, but I caught the dog. I let the dog out and then I caught it. I ash ketchumed that dog. And I like, we rolled and like, I'm getting like gravel all over me and I'm like, ugh, and this dog is struggling and I'm like, no, no. So I have like, I'm holding killer to my chest and we're just laying there. And like, it takes me two seconds to realize that I'm alive and that I actually just did that. And no one was around to see it. Isn't that how that always works? No one is ever around to see your awesomeness. Like, you know, when you like almost drop something and you're like, oh, and then no one looks, no one's there. And you know the odds that you're never, ever going to do this again. When am I ever going to run down the street after a chihuahua named Killer and save it from running into traffic? When am I ever going to do that again? 
So I'm walking back up the road with this dog, and I'm like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, oh yeah, we'll be fine, you know, and I'm petting it, and I'm like, like, freaking out on the inside that that just happened, and I don't know if you know anything about people, but like, um, some people like to clap after movies, and like, some people like to clap when anything happens in life, just because their hands are so full of like, joy, I guess, that they have to clap. So there's these two people on the porch, and then there's this guy mowing his lawn, and I'm like walking with this dog, and all of a sudden it's just like... So, one, people did see me f fumble the, the dog into the, the road, and um, they, they felt it was cool enough to... Not even like a golf clap, it was like a... It was like a, you, you did that, go you, round of applause for you. And I'm like... <laughs> and I get like red as a tomato, because like... People just saw me sweat and run after a dog, and you know that people are going to talk about this. Oh, you know that weird, that, the, the, uh, the, uh, the guys across the street, they hired a dog sitter, and they lost the dog, but then they ran after it down the road and fumbled the dog, and then caught it and walked back up, and then I was telling you this story while I was in the kitchen, I washing a dish. That's, that's such an ancient reference. If you know what that reference is from... And I was in the kitchen washing a dish. If you if you know what that reference is from, please come and kill me because I'm old. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I um, the moral of the story is pay attention, put collars on your dogs, and um, you might want to at least try working on some cardio just in case you know, like you lose your dog or a zombie apocalypse happens. I'm too nice. I didn't do it for any money either. It's validation. I'm nice because I know that karma's gonna come around and give me all that I desire, which is a bunch of dogs and a hug from Ryan Reynolds. So that'll happen. I gotta start being like a, like mean. I should start being mean. Like, you don't look super awesome today. You look okay. You look fudge. You look better than okay. You look great, but not super awesome. Or like, no Janet. That is not your Keller sweater. The other one would look better on you. This one looks bad. I'll start telling people off. Like, <laughs> you think your dog's cute? Well, F you, buddy. Look at my dog. Being mean feels good. All right, I'll see you um, Tuesday because I'm going. I was going to review Deadpool today, but I'm also I'm going to see it again on Tuesday for the tenth time. So I'm going to do it then when it's fresh in my mind ever had a moment where like you wish someone saw what you did like you did this cool awesome like you dropped something but you caught it or like I don't know you flipped a, a coin and it like spun and landed like like that on a table or something I don't know okay I love you guys what, what were all those sound effects I love you